Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. Before we start, I want to say a massive thank you to our top tier patrons. More on Patreon later. For now, let's jump into the video. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that I am very passionate about. And this is the way that MMOs have been and are being built. And to put it bluntly, they're being built backwards. Now many of you who are in my Discord daily or tune into my live streams on Twitch will know that this is my opinion on this. But for those of you who don't, or maybe haven't had the chance to catch my videos or streams, I'm going to go over a little bit of why. And what exactly do I mean by MMOs being built backwards? Well, let's look at some of the older MMOs, the ones that we are all fond of and that we all used to enjoy. Such as RuneScape, Meridian 59, Ultima Online, EverQuest, Tibia, Asheron's Call, and all those sort of games. People could objectively say that those games had a brilliant business model. You either pay for a game up front, or monthly, and you get the game. Nothing more to it, nothing less. But it's not so much the business model that's interesting here. Let's use RuneScape as an example, as that's the game I'm currently playing the hell out of. I would advise people to check out a RuneScape documentary called RuneScape 15 Years of Adventure. It's made by RuneScape, however, it's a very honest and fair assessment of their journey from developing in their mom's kitchen on an old computer to working their way up to having 50 employees. It was watching this again recently that sparked me to make this video. It made me realise just how few people have actually seen this documentary and how valuable the opinions on it are. So, to give you guys the TLDR, Jagex started off as three brothers that were working on a game. This is a game they were passionate about, and a game that they really wanted to make. Money was never even part of the equation. In fact, it wasn't until much later down the line when they realised that server costs were a thing. They got to a point where hosting it themselves was too much, and paying someone to host it for them, well, they couldn't afford it. This was an honest-to-God passion project that turned into something more because of the passion that was put into it. They started out with 20, 30 players at once and it grew and grew and grew from word of mouth. No advertising, pure word of mouth. And as I just said, it got too big. Too big for them to host on their own PCs. So then they started to pursue a business model that allowed for you to pay an optional member's fee to gain extra features, extra locations in the world, extra quests to do, but it never devalued what was done before. It was something extra. Think of it as a free trial that is indefinite, but if you're done with the free trial, as in not completed it, but are just done with it, you can move on to the member's part of the game. And it's a very fair price. It's a very low price, but it's fair. This business model forces them to make weekly updates or monthly updates that keep people entertained and keep them interested. And this is why their game works so well. If they decide for a month, nah, we're not going to put out any updates. Well, people just cancel their subscriptions and their lack of effort gives them a lack of reward, a lack of payment. Forcing them to actually keep updating it and keep doing things to it that players want. It is in their best interest to not piss off the player. Something we don't see too much anymore. With the bigger games like New World as an example, where the first thought on their mind is how can we make as much money as quickly as possible using games? They're not a games company. Amazon are not a games company. They went into the games market because they know it can make a lot of money if done correctly. And this is where we start to see issues. Games nowadays are being built backwards. The first thought on anyone's mind is how can we make money and how can we make as much of it as quickly as we can. This means that the original step from games like RuneScape, which is how can we make a game that's incredibly fun that we want to play, is no longer there. It's now how can we make a game that is fun enough to pull a player in, but frustrating enough to make them pay. Now, New World is probably the most lenient in this sense, that they're not really inconveniencing you to get you to pay for things. However, many, many games are using this business model to their advantage. And unfortunately, as a player base, we're so hungry for something different that we're willing to jump in and pay it. We, we are the enemy that we're seeking to beat. If we stopped paying for these ridiculous services, 
they would stop charging for these ridiculous services. But that's another topic entirely. This leads me down the path of crypto and NFT games, because a lot of people don't seem to understand my standpoint on this. Some people say, hey, the other day you said you hated this, and now you like it, and tomorrow you'll probably hate it again. So let me explain my stance on this. I strongly, strongly dislike NFT and crypto-based games. Because, as I've just said, any MMO that starts with money as its primary focus generally tends to fall short of the mark. And we're getting a lot of new developers coming into the space, and the first thing that they think of with a game is NFT or blockchain. Money, money, money. And because of the nature of the beast, this is just a game, this is always a game concept that's made to milk money from you. Look at Earth 2, look at Ember Sword, look at Axie Infinity. Now, in all fairness, Axie Infinity is a game by every metric. It, it is a game. But it's still just milking money from you. You, you have to have $200 to even get into the game with a single Axie. Uh, I did actually look into getting into this for a video recently, and I, there's no way in hell I was paying $200 to, to test the game. Now, there is a sad reality. A lot of us go into gaming to escape the real world. Uh, many countries have a very low income and are very below the bar. I know when I was younger, I jumped onto RuneScape because although I didn't have any money and my family didn't have a great amount of money, I could jump into RuneScape and none of that mattered. The, the guy I went to school with whose family, you know, were millionaires, I still absolutely slapped his cheeks in the wilderness. And that was great. No real world influence on a, on a digital fantasy game. But that's not the case anymore. And we're, we're seeing games just aimed at luring in whales. And it started this trend of people just becoming complacent. Saying, well, just don't be a whale. Don't spend money on the game if you don't want to. You don't have to spend money. And that's a really problematic way to look at this. Some people want to play games to be a hero, to be the person in the game, and to, to really feel immersed. Nothing breaks immersion in a game like having a low-level player with daddy's credit card just run past you, swiping at absolutely anything in the cash shop. RuneScape 3 proved that this was an absolutely flawed method of developing. Everybody was running around looking like they'd come straight off RuPaul's Drag Race. Golden glitter just everywhere, demon wings sprouting from your forehead, just you name it, they got to the point where nothing they added to the game could outdo the previous thing. For lack of a better term, they shot their load too quickly, and they sold out to the richer player base, the whales. No longer could you go and kill something in-game and get something that looked truly awesome. You could get a stat stick that you'd then have to go and buy a cosmetic override for to make it look pretty. Now, I apologise that this has been more of a ranty kind of video, but it's been something that people have asked me about a lot recently and asked me my opinions on. So, considering it's something I'm quite passionate about, I really did want to express my feelings on this. I know that sometimes you guys really like my opinion pieces, so hopefully you've enjoyed this one. As always, a massive thank you to the patrons. You guys rock. If you guys find yourself at the end of the month, sat there with a few extra dollars to throw at NFTs, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. Every single bit of support helps. As always, if you are watching this as it premieres, I am going to be live over on Twitch playing some RuneScape. We are geared up to take the group Iron Man to Barrows. So let's hope for some lucky drops and I'll see you over there. As always, have an awesome day and a fantastic week.